as we say so long to the month of May, we take a look back at some magnificent play. Everything from a walk-off to a perfect game, it's exactly what you'd expect from the Palisades. So get ready for the show that tells you everything you need to know on this month in Wiffle Ball. Since a 33-run outburst opening day, runs have been hard to come by for the Rangers. It is on. It is on. What looked to be an offensive juggernaut ended May with only five runs scored and a 2-2 two and two record. But it wasn't without some fireworks. After falling to the D-backs earlier in the day, the Rangers picked up a split by taking down the Dodgers with this Rich Galad two-run shot in the sixth inning. Week three, they did it again, this time with a Mike Mulfetis two-run walk-off home run to steal a split from the A's. With a tough June ahead of them, we should see if the Rangers are contenders or pretenders. There is no team in the league happier to be three and three than the A's. With a win over the Tigers, a win over the struggling Rays, and an unlikely win over the Rangers, the A's are suddenly a team that looks like they should be taken seriously. Chris Schneider and Tom Beninati have been on fire at the plate in the early going of 2014. But the real story is the A's young pitchers. In 17 innings, Kyle Von Schlesingen has struck out 43, and if not for one poorly placed pitch, would have a two and one record. Jordan Robles hasn't allowed a run this season and has won both games he's pitched in this year. With the Dodgers up next, we'll see if the A's can continue to roll. Atop the standings is almost where you'd expect the Mariners to be. What you wouldn't expect is that they have done it without much help from the right arm of Matt Fleeser. Scott Fleeser has carried the load so far this season by striking out 42 in 17 innings and winning all three of his starts. After missing the first two weeks of the season and all of last year, Nick Gallo is back and on a mission. In his first start of 2014, he struck out six and didn't allow a hit in a mercy rule shortened three inning game. As dominant as the Mariners have been on the carpet, they've been even better at the plate and lead the league with a ridiculous 374 average. While it is unlikely they will be able to keep up the torrid pace, the early returns bode well for this once light hitting team. May started off great for the Diamondbacks. They crushed the Phillies and then picked up an unlikely win against the Rangers when Garrett Torres allowed only one run over six innings and hit the eventual game-winning home run off Rich Galad. From there, everything has gone downhill. Scuteri has been unable to pitch, and this once-feared offense only scored one run in a doubleheader against the Rays. Things aren't so bad for the D-backs as they found themselves with the first waiver pick after week three and a chance to grab a one-day recruit who debuted with the Dodgers. It was a memorable month of May for the Dodgers. Brett Bevilacqua became the league's all-time win leader. Ryan McElrath shut down the Tigers in back-to-back -back games. Matt Riegler got every rally started. Get out, Riegler! And waiver pickup Rob Withman Piervanazzi made his presence felt in his very first game. After six games, the Dodgers are in first place and the only team that is yet to be shut out. If they can continue to hit in big spots with Miguel Rapp on the carpet, they will be the team to beat in the Palisades WBL. The Brewers are the only team in the league that hasn't allowed a run, and that's due in large part to the pitching of Tim Miguel Rapp. In 27 innings, he has allowed just six hits while striking out 67, and if that wasn't enough to put his name in the Cy Young conversation, a perfect game certainly is. Rotation mate Joe Gallo turned back the clock opening day with his hitting. Week two, he showed he still belongs on the carpet by blanking the A's. In spite of their great pitching, the Brewers find themselves in third place with a record of four and two due to two losses on total bases, and therein lies the problem. The Brewers have had trouble with good pitching. While you need big time pitching performances to get into the postseason, you'll still need to hit the great pitchers to win it all. What started out looking like a lost season for the Rays, turned on a dime week three. After losing their first four games and unable to do anything in the early going against the D-backs, Nick Anazalakis broke out of his slump with this fifth inning solo shot, and that was all Ray's ace Bo Mashinsky would need to notch his first win of the season. In their second game of the day, the Rays jumped on the D-backs early with a bases loaded triple by Mashinsky. Mashinsky would once again pitch back-to-back -back games and hold the D-backs to just one run. It is clear that without Sean Ryan, the Rays will have a hard time competing in 2014. But if they can find a way to get the young right-hander back on the carpet, 
the Rays could make a run at the playoffs and beyond. Just six games into the season, and it has already been a long year for the Phillies. And without a pitcher who has an ERA under 20, it may not get better anytime soon. But it's not all bad news. The Phillies have had one of the toughest schedules in the league, and it looks like they are starting to get the hang of things. With only a little more than a quarter of a season played, they still have plenty of time to turn things around. And the addition of hard-throwing rookie Mike Wiener could be the shot in the arm the Phillies wow, need to get something going. There has been no shortage of great twins in Palisades WBL history. We all know about Ryan and Tim McElrath. And who can forget the great run rookies Kevin and John Historico went on in 2012? Well, it might be time to add one more twin to the list. His name is Nick Santana. So far this season, Santana has got it done for the Twins. He leads the team with a 345 batting average and is already looking like a lock for Fielder of the Year. But that hasn't translated into wins for the Twins. After going 1-3 in May, the Twins look to be a team in trouble. And it's not going to get any easier as they face the Tigers Week 4. Off last year's championship, 3-3 three three isn't how anyone expected the Tigers to start 2014. After a split opening day, the Tigers bounce back with convincing Week 2 wins over the Rays and Mariners. Tim Ternary set a new scoreless inning streak at 53 and was batting 500 with two home runs and nine RBI. Bill Murphy also got off to a quick start with a 400 batting average, a home run, and six RBI. But Week 3 was a different story. After bouncing the Dodgers out of the 2013 playoffs, they had a score to settle and would hand the Tigers their first sweep in team history, end Trenary's scoreless inning streak, and drop them from first all the way to sixth place. Well, no one thinks of the Tigers as a 500 team, their air of invincibility may be a thing of the past. Here are the standings after three weeks of play. That's all for now. Join us next time as we look back at the month of June on This Month in Wiffle Ball. <laughs>